Warning. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Editor's note. The bloggers listed here are not endorsed by or affiliated with Build Your Own Blog. Building a loyal, passionate blog audience is much easier when your content isn't boring. Successful bloggers, those who are building large audiences, keep their content interesting by mixing in stories, humor, and inspiration. And then there are the bloggers who take it to a whole new level by embracing controversy. <gasps> controversy? You mean like content that gets people angry, emotionally charged, and outraged? Won't that turn some people off? Well, people do love to be outraged and tune in to people that make them angry. Case in point, Rush Limbaugh. As you're about to see, the same holds true with blogging. Some niche bloggers thrive on controversy, and it's working for them. But that doesn't mean you should try it. So if you're just getting started, but not sure if you should embrace controversy or stay away from it, let me say this. I think that in many cases, controversy can help a blogger find their audience in the first place. That's what many of the most infamous bloggers have done. They embraced controversy, made it their friend, and found their audience. But controversy can be tricky. Use it wrongly, and you can lose your audience overnight, or never find a tribe to begin with. You should also consider the natural consequences that controversial blogging or putting out controversial content can bring to your life, especially if you get a lot of web traffic. Hate mail, death threats, hacker attacks, lawsuits, smear campaigns, and even physical and mental exhaustion. If you can handle the blowback, a little controversy might be just what your blog needs. I did some research looking for the most extreme examples and put together a list of the world's most controversial bloggers. What I found is 12 individual bloggers who have built a notable blog career with controversy. Most of these bloggers have been successful with their controversial content for an extended period of time, except for the last one on the list. He crashed and burned quickly. Personally, I think his career ended so soon because he tried too hard to be controversial. He was being controversial for the sake of it. That was his primary motive, and it blew up in his face. What I think we can learn from these 12 examples is this. The world's most controversial bloggers are not intentionally using controversy as some sort of blogging tactic. They are simply being themselves in front of the world, and their blog is a metaphorical glass house. As you look through this list, you may think these 12 bloggers are being over the top with their controversial content. You may wonder if maybe they're being a little too open and transparent with their audience. Well, isn't that what controversial blogging is all about? Revealing your truth? What you think, what you believe, how you live your life, your opinions, your hard questions, your inner thoughts. This has been happening long before the internet came along. Whenever we show our true selves to the world, somebody is not going to like it. The world's most controversial bloggers are people who have viewpoints, ideas, or lifestyles that spark controversy, and they have decided to share these things online despite the consequences. They have chosen to be lightning rods of outrage because, in their mind, the positive results outweigh the negatives. This decision has also led most of them to financial independence, even prosperity in some cases. Let's be real here. Most people don't have the audacity needed to produce one controversial blog post, let alone hundreds or even thousands of posts. The world's most controversial bloggers produce content that goes beyond the typical left-right political arguments that you see all over social media. Many of them are not political at all. They are just people publishing content that somehow hits an emotional nerve with readers or viewers. 
Their content pushes subconscious buttons at a level much higher than the average blogger is willing to do or capable of doing. As you read through this list, you might consider these bloggers to be antisocial, sociopathic, maybe even dangerous. Or you may consider them brave, authentic, even heroic disruptors of the status quo. One thing these bloggers definitely are is controversial. You can let us know in the comments what you think about them personally, their ideas, and their blogs. Author's Note The bloggers on this list made the list based on the amount of controversy they produce. Their selection has nothing to do with my own personal preferences. I had not heard of most of these bloggers before researching, and as the disclaimer above says, myself or buildyourownblog.net has no relationship with any of these bloggers, and we do not endorse or approve their content. All right, let's take a look at this infamous crew. These are the world's most controversial bloggers. Blogger 1. Rush V. Blogs at RushV.com. Possibly the most controversial blogger ever, Rush V, real name Darius Velizade, was a microbiologist who started a blog called DC Bachelor in 2004, writing in his spare time. By 2007, Rush V self published his first book called Bang and quit his job, never working as a microbiologist again. Rush V is considered by many to be a pickup artist. His content outrages feminists and many others. Rush V also travels around the globe doing speaking engagements to a mostly male audience, teaching them how to seduce women. Although, interestingly, he has recently published a book titled Lady that he describes as a guide to, quote, help women find love, long-term relationships, and marriage in a modern environment, end quote. His content is heavily criticized with accusations of rape promotion, misogyny, and anti-Semitism. Several of his books have been removed from the Amazon.com self-publishing platform. He has been banned from PayPal and Discs, blacklisted by the Southern Poverty Law Center, had speaking appearances canceled due to protests, and has even been followed by angry mobs protesting his presence in their community. However, Rushvi is still blogging to his loyal audience today. Blogger 2. Sarah Jong. She blogs at sarahjong.net. Most of the controversy generated by Sarah Jong has taken place outside her blog. Jong is a writer and journalist for several publications, including Forbes, The Guardian, and The New York Times. However, Twitter has been her biggest lightning rod. Jiang has enraged both conservatives and progressive SJWs with her tweets. In 2016, Jiang tweeted a caricature of Bernie Sanders supporters that infuriated Berners so much they harassed Jiang for weeks and even threatened her with violence. Then in 2018, the New York Times hired her to join their editorial board. Conservative media strongly opposed her hiring and highlighted a series of tweets from Jiang that many Caucasians considered offensive and racist. Jiang did release an apology, claiming the tweets were satirical, and The Verge came to her defense, saying the tweets were taken out of context. Things have been fairly quiet lately for Jiang, but give her time. She's young and will likely create something controversial again. Blogger number three. Matt Walsh. Blogs at the Matt Walsh blog. Matt Walsh is definitely not afraid of controversy. He has been an influential voice of the religious right for several years now, boldly blogging on practically any subject, no matter how controversial. For example, he has been an outspoken voice in the pro-life movement and regularly writes about religion, which is, of course, considered a taboo topic and very controversial by most people. Walsh appeals to younger conservatives in the millennial and Gen Z demographic with his youth, alcohol consumption, and tattoos. His takes come from a fundamentalist Catholic perspective, and his moral outrage at today's postmodern culture 
rings a bell with his tribe of loyal followers. Here are some recent blog headlines that demonstrate Walsh's enthusiasm for controversy. The Jesse Smollett case shows what privilege in America really looks like. Joe Biden is way too old to be president. The left must keep its bizarre religious doctrines out of the classroom. Blogger number three, David Icke. Blogs at davidicke.com. David Icke describes himself as the most controversial speaker and author in the world. And that is probably his one theory that everyone can agree on. 99% of his other theories, not so much. You see, David Icke is what is known as a conspiracy theorist. However, many of his fans from both the political left and right consider him to be more of a conspiracy realist. In other words, they believe his theories and eat them up. Icke's theories are definitely not mainstream. For example, he says the Earth is run by reptilian shapeshifters who pull the strings of global events behind the curtain. Another thing that gets him in trouble with many is his focus on the Jews, which is why many call Icky an anti-Semite. Icky has built his self-supporting audience through self-publishing books. In the early 90s, his publisher cut ties with him due to anti-Semitic concerns. He also builds his audience through his website and by doing many speaking engagements around the world. While researching Icky, it became apparent to me that some of today's contemporary conspiracy theories originated from Icky, or he has at least helped make them more widely known thanks to his large platform. Icky's content is extremely controversial, which enabled him to join this list with ease. His Wikipedia page will give you an overview of his views. So go check it out. Blogger number five, Deuce, also known as Heather Armstrong blogs at deuce.com. Considered the queen of mommy bloggers, Deuce was quite controversial in her heyday, when mommy blogging was still predominantly polite and vanilla in its content and personality. Deuce came out cussing like a sailor and seemed to have no filter whatsoever, which really shook up the blogosphere back in those days. Her blogging career technically started before mommy blogging, when she was a graphic artist working for a startup. She has never revealed this mystery employer. Deuce did something that is bound to get any blogger in trouble. She wrote satirical accounts of her experiences at work, including the real people she worked with. Yeah, she got fired. Deuce admitted to her readers that this was a stupid thing to do. She went on to grow Deuce.com into a powerhouse blog while creating controversy along the way. Deuce has been fearless with her transparent blog posts. Depression breast pumps, entering a mental hospital, a lifelong member of the LDS church, her relationship with the church caused its own controversies, and Deuce is no longer a member. Deuce has achieved the type of success that many bloggers dream of, but with a price. Her marriage ended in 2012, causing Deuce to live as a single mom, which made it difficult for her to keep her prodigious publishing schedule. Deuce reached a point of burnout, but has found a happy place now. Posting for mainly pure enjoyment today, backing off of sponsored posts, and making a living as a speaker and consultant. Deuce is only 43 and has plenty of time to surprise us again with some fresh controversy, so stay tuned. Blogger number six, Mike Cernovich blogging at Cernovich.com. This social media provocateur and conspiracy theorist blogger has been stirring the pot for years. A law school graduate, Cernovich started blogging in the early 2000s. His content was primarily known to focus on anti-feminist themes, which brought him a lot of attention in the manosphere. Hated by feminists, Cernovich has been labeled a male supremacist by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Some call him alt-right, but Cernovich does not identify with that term. And if that isn't controversial enough, Cernovich blogs on all sorts of topics bound to outrage large groups of people, like Pizzagate, John Podesta's emails, and men's rights. 
Along with his own blog, he is also a regular host of The Alex Jones Show on the InfoWars website. Currently just 41 years old, Cernovich continues to create controversial content that some love while others hate. There is no middle ground for those who follow Cernovich. Blogger number seven, Perez Hilton. Blogging at PerezHilton.com. Many Americans can't get enough celebrity news and gossip. Perez Hilton has been unapologetically obsessed with celebrity culture since his childhood, so it didn't take him long to find his blogging niche. The former actor and freelance writer found blogging to be pretty easy, and his success should be commended. As he rose to blogging fame and semi-fortune, Hilton has added author, columnist, and television personality to his resume. Hilton said in a Cliché Magazine interview that his blog started out as a hobby, but instead of following the blogger pack and doing the usual online blog journal thing, Hilton blogged about celebrities because, as he said, quote, they're far more entertaining. Why is Perez Hilton controversial? Well, he takes celebrity gossip to places many won't go. One big example, he has a history of outing alleged closeted celebrities. Controversy abounds as Hilton writes about the um, endowments of celebrities, outs closeted celebs, and continues to stir things up. Like the time he was a Miss USA pageant judge and asked contestant Carrie Prejean if she thought every state should legalize gay marriage. He did not like her answer and proceeded to ridicule her on camera and on his blog. Another controversial incident included a Miley Cyrus upskirt photo he posted on his blog that came close to child pornography charges. She was underage at the time. There are other controversies connected to Michael Jackson and other celebs. Perez is one of those bloggers' success stories that cannot be denied or ignored. He won't let you ignore him. Perez is bound to cause more controversy sometime soon. You can bank on it. Blogger number eight, Kate Hopkins. Blogging at HopkinsWorld.com. Hopkins doesn't call herself a blogger. She wants to be known as a journalist, someone who tells the stories not being told, quote unquote. An English media personality and businesswoman, Hopkins has built her platform using social media and television, but got her start as a writer for The Sun and The Daily Mail. Calling her career controversial would be an understatement. Hopkins' outspoken views have sparked cries of racism, petitions and protests. She hates multiculturalism, clearly opposes Islam, and pushes the white genocide theory. She also wrote a column about migrants that was condemned by the United Nations High Commissioner of Human Rights. Hopkins also has a reputation of getting into Twitter arguments with public figures like Simon Cowell, Charlotte Church, Russell Brand, and others. She's also been involved in several lawsuits. Blogger number nine, Paul Stenson. Blogs at paulvstenson.com. Stenson owns the White Moose Cafe and Charleville Lodge in Dublin, Ireland. As the owner of a brick and mortar business, Stenson's embrace of controversial content seems like a risky move, but it appears to be working for him as his lodge gets a lot of free publicity through his antics, while the White Moose Reviews page averages 4.5 stars, and the business has profited almost 100,000 pounds in profit since Stenson became the front man for the lodge. If Stenson is using controversy intentionally to raise money, it appears to be working. The controversy started flowing in 2018, when Stenson publicly responded to a blogger social media influencer who requested a free stay at his lodge for a positive write-up about her experience. This was known as the Ella Darby White Moose Cafe exposure controversy, also known as hashtag bloggergate. Stenson's scathing rebuttal, along with the influencer revealing herself and fighting back publicly, went viral and kicked off the controversy nicely. Many people on Facebook were outraged one way or the other about this whole thing. Controversy struck again when Stenson posted a photo to Facebook that many said was intended to troll breastfeeding mothers. A tsunami of furious angry moms responded, 
but a slew of photographers slammed Stenson for using a photograph that was copyrighted. Stenson had not given any credit to the photographer. He was heavily criticized for stealing an artist's work. Not exactly the controversy he expected, I'm sure. Additional controversies from Stenson so far include a war, quote-unquote, on vegans, telling customers unable to afford his hotel rates to go find a homeless shelter, and he even published CCTV footage of a customer. If you're ever in Dublin, need a bite to eat, and you want something on the controversial side, consider the White Moose Cafe. And as you can see here, check out what Stenson wrote on the homepage of the White Moose Cafe website, and you'll see right away how much this guy loves stirring the pot. He wrote on his About Us page, the White Moose Cafe is the only five Michelin star restaurant on planet Mars. We specialize in high carb, low protein meals. We don't do decaf coffee, non-alcoholic beer, or gluten-free dishes, as we firmly believe that you only live once. If you are not happy with any of the above, you are probably a precious snowflake, in which case we don't want you in our cafe anyway. Thank you now. Bye-bye. Blogger number 10, Constance Hall, blogging at likeaqueen.com. This mummy blogger in Perth, Australia, exploded on the blog scene back in 2016 when she wrote a post on her free WordPress.com website called The Not-So-Secret Life of Us. The post went viral. This post was a funny and uncomfortably honest look at parental sex. Hall described it as 3.5 minutes you get in between changing nappies and making food, when you and your spouse can slip away for a quickie while the kids are distracted. The post went so viral that Hall became a star. What makes Hall controversial and compelling to follow is her complete and total transparency. She's rude, crude, and seems to have little to no sense of boundaries. She's open about everything, and that will naturally stir up some controversy now and then. Her content, videos, and written posts gets gobbled up by over 2 million followers. Hall outgrew the free WordPress site and she is now blogging at likeaqueen.com where she rants at her husband for helping out with the kids when he's asked and covers touchy subjects like the difficulties blended families face, childbirth, bullying, and slut shaming. 2019 has already been a wild ride for Hall, who was recently sued once again for defamation by her former book editor and friend Kristen Watts. Hall also appeared on Dancing with the Stars in March of 2019. Blogger number 11, A.F. James MacArthur. Blogging at the Baltimore Spectator. His bio reads, occasional media critic, researcher, independent investigator, and entrepreneur. A.F. James MacArthur is Baltimore's most well-known independent journalist. MacArthur has been a pioneer of citizen journalism covering police brutality and corruption before it became fashionable. Although not well known outside of Maryland, MacArthur has been a consistent thorn in the side of Baltimore power brokers and politicians, and has had some serious run-ins with local authorities in Baltimore. For example, in December 2012, MacArthur became embroiled in a standoff with police while at home. Mac, as they call him, broadcasted the standoff in real time on his popular Twitter channel and even broadcasted a long phone conversation he had with police. MacArthur was eventually arrested and held in a pretrial incarceration for six months, being denied bail multiple times during that time. MacArthur has built a large following using his website's radio podcast and YouTube channel. His Baltimore Spectator blog has been quiet the past three years, as, as has his social media presence. His current whereabouts are unknown. James, if you're watching this, let us know how you're doing in the comments. And our last blogger, Amos Yee. He blogs nowhere now, as his blog was shut down. Only four years ago, Lee became a symbol of free speech rights around the world when he was arrested in his native country of Singapore for publishing some critical videos of Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. After a trial that gained international coverage, Yi fled to the U.S. Unfortunately, Yi chased controversy a little too far. 
After spending some time held in detention by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Yi was released in September of 2017. He proceeded to start a YouTube channel and quickly gained notoriety for his videos that expressed support for pedophilia. And that's when Yi's brief burst of blogging stardom came crashing down. In May of 2018, his YouTube channel was removed, Twitter suspended his account, and Patreon cut ties with Yi. As of December of 2018, Yi's WordPress blog, Facebook account, and pro-pedophile Discord server entitled Ball Pit were all shut down. Today, his whereabouts are unknown. If you'd like to read more about his story, check out his Wikipedia page. Do you have the stomach for controversial blogging? Posting controversial content is not for everyone. Controversy can get you noticed, help you grow your audience, and even raise your income level. However, controversy can be exhausting if you aren't aligned with its vibration. Remember, don't try to be controversial. Just be yourself. Overcome your fears, share it, and be prepared for the consequences. Sometimes, controversial content is just taking a stand for something you believe in. Or it could be as simple as sharing something you like. For example, you can have something, an opinion as innocuous as your love for the McDonald's Big Mac, and that will probably make someone outraged. Have you ever noticed how some people get really mad about the silliest things, like food preferences? So, whatever controversy you have to share, if you can muster up a little courage, be yourself, and blog about it on a consistent basis, Maybe we will see you added to this list one day. Insert your name, the world's most controversial blogger. Go for it. I wish you much success. Sincerely, Matthew Kabumas Loomis at buildyourownblog.net.